As we inch closer to the 2020 election, some lawmakers are working to ensure that the election manipulations that happened in 2016 do not happen again. The Deep Fakes Accountability Act is aimed at combating the spread of disinformation, specifically of deep fake video alteration technology. New York Congresswoman Yvette Clark introduced the bill last week. She joins us now to discuss the importance of this legislation and then to expand on what it would do. Congresswoman Clark serves on the Homeland Security Committee as well as the Committee on Energy and Commerce. Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Saga. It's great to be with you. So, Congresswoman, tell us what inspired you to introduce this act. Yeah, I have been doing a series of um, workshops here on Capitol Hill through my Multicultural Media Caucus. And one thing that was brought to my attention was how uh, new artificial intelligence, augmented intelligence, has been used, quite frankly, to target vulnerable populations, black women, revenge porn, all of which has been manipulated in a way in which it is damaging to individuals in our society. And, I, you know, we took that steps further to say, you know, this is a growing and emerging technology that, if applied in a whole host of ways, can be devastating to our society. And so I thought it was critical that we really get ahead of this as much as we can that we inform the public of the deceptive nature of deep fakes of video so that uh, they are informed and know that either these videos are being used for entertainment or nefarious uh, purposes. Well, and this issue really burst in the public consciousness with an altered video of Nancy Pelosi that appeared to make her look like she was slurring her words. Um, but how do you put the genie back in the bottle, so to speak? I mean, how do you keep people from making these there videos There is at no all, putting the you, genie, right. How do you raise visibility? There, there is What's really going no on? putting in the... Yeah, there is no putting the genie back in the bottle, but we can hold um, uh, these individuals who create these videos accountable. We can hold the platforms that, uh, pr that uh, bring these videos to the public accountable. And the way that we do that through this legislation is to make sure that there is a watermark of some sort on these videos or a disclaimer, both a written disclaimer and audio disclaimer, so that individuals know that what they're viewing is an altered or a fake video, just to be quite blunt. I think, Congressman, what I like about this the most is that, unlike many of your colleagues, you're actually getting ahead of one of the issues that is going to confront us in a highly digital age between deep fakes, AI, augmented reality, and how it can really fundamentally change the medium that we have built to trust, which is video. But that being said, well, I've seen some of the Silicon Valley publications who have criticized this legislation just saying that it's frankly unenforceable and that with the nature of the internet, this is just something that we have to live with. Do you think that that's, that you think that that's no, true? It's well, it's in their interest to say so because they have they play a role in bringing us these deep fakes. Mm -hmm. I believe that this is a start, uh, you know, and there are implications if we don't do anything. It's important that the public is not deceived in any way, shape, or form, particularly going into this next election cycle. We've all been manipulated by um, social media uh, under the last election, uh, given uh, what we know now through the Mueller report and other reporting, that uh, the Russians, uh, with along with a whole host of other uh, organizations, targeted the American population with so-called fake news, um, generating all kinds of animosities and all kinds of chaos, quite frankly, in society about what was truthful and what wasn't. And so now we have video that can amplify that even further. We need to do something immediately to get ahead of this. And I believe that watermarking, uh, putting a disclaimer, or even an audio introduction indicating that these are fake videos are very important. And, you know, this uh, legislation does have teeth in it. It's important that, you know, individuals who are caught in violation of this will have to be held accountable for that, uh, whether it's sanctioning in some form or fashion or shaming, public shaming. And uh, we will develop technologies because, uh, you know, this, this is an emerging industry. Uh, 
we will develop technologies that can uh, give us a clear indication that these are fake videos, that they were augmented or uh, adapted in some form or fashion uh, to shade the truth uh, from the American people. We have to get ahead of it. We have to be forward thinking. That's a great thing about being on the Energy and Commerce Committee is that you have an opportunity to really get ahead of what we know is coming down the pipe, what is already a reality for us, right. and that is that video can be manipulated. So the creators will be held accountable, but what about the platforms? Um, if a video, if a deep fake video is posted on the platform, is it their responsibility to identify it and either Absolutely. notify the creator or put the watermark on? Absolutely. They have to be in partnership. If they receive a video that they're able to, to, to acknowledge as being deep fake, it doesn't have a watermark, it doesn't have a disclaimer, it is their responsibility not to view that until those disclaimers or that watermark is on that video. Congressman, have you had any discussions you know with the let's, let's get themselves? let's get these let's get these companies. I'm sorry. Oh, I said do, have you have you had any discussion with these companies themselves like Facebook, Instagram and YouTube? No, not yet, but I think that, you know, it is their responsibility. And not only that, listen, these are all em um, uh, evolving companies. They're all growing by leaps and bounds. They're investing in their technologies. They can invest in a technology that can detect this. I can't believe that uh, given all we know about how algorithms and everything else work within the context of technology, that they can't develop a tool that can uh, pick up the fact that these videos are falsely uh, indicating to the American people uh, the truth versus mm -hmm. deception. What's the response been from your Republican colleagues? Well, you know, I, I haven't heard a lot from them yet, but I intend to speak to a number of our colleagues. There are many who I know are interested uh, in seeing uh, truth come forward, that are interested in uh, emerging technologies and uh, where we're going as a civil society. So I expect that I will be able to get bipartisan support for this. Uh, Congressman Clark, I wanted to ask you on another political issue. Uh, Joe Biden reportedly at a fundraiser spoke about how uh, he was able to have a civil relationship with several senators who were, you know, notorious segregationists in the South. Uh, I wonder if you're comfortable with that, uh, with that language and with him, you know, speaking about those relationships in positive terms. Well, you, you, we have to put Joe Biden in context. This is a man who's been in public office um, for several uh, generations, several decades now. And there's no doubt that there were, con there were uh, individuals with, who were elected by their constituents that held uh, racist beliefs. Uh, he had to get a job done. And um, I, ostracizing those individuals would not uh, have served uh, the American people well during that time. I don't agree. Uh, I certainly would not have chosen to interact with individuals who held racist beliefs. I doubt they would have interacted with me. Uh, but I'm putting what he said in context. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that uh, we still have individuals who hold those beliefs in Congress today. They may not be as outspoken or it may not be as apparent. Uh, but certainly when you uh, think about how people are uh, basically uh, justifying what's happening on the southern border, justifying some of the things that Donald Trump has said right now in the 21st century that serve with me here in Congress. I'm not comfortable with those individuals. I, I doubt that uh, I would necessarily partner with them on a whole heap of things. But if one of them were interested in helping me uh, move forward the deep fakes legislation, I may consider that. Huh. All right, Congressman well, Clark. Thank you, Congresswoman. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And next up on Rising, the number of people with chronic illness is increasing in the United States. So how is the United States adapting? We'll talk about that in the Rising Future of Medicare series next.